I'm gonna show you the exact things you need to do to achieve the 12 basic fundamental skills of mountain biking. It's going to be as easy as putting on a helmet and achieve it in one practice session. Yes, I actually said achieve these in one practice session. And the reason I'm making this video for you is that I've been coaching riders and when I coach intermediate riders, about 90% of them are missing three or four of these basic skills and they've been getting by for sometimes decades without them. So I'm going to share them with you so that you can skip potentially months or years of frustration, so let's dive in. Skill number one is you need to be able to ride standing tall. Now standing tall, what this is, is you're riding along at an easy pace and we're balanced. Doesn't seem very complicated, think again, because why this is so important is that we need to be able to do this skill by balancing on our strong, stable, muscles in our legs. If we try to balance by leaning on the bars or by leaning back, you're going to be off balance. You're going to be really having a hard time. And the reason why this skill is first and so important is because it translates into uphill, downhill, jumps. It translates into cornering. It translates into everything else because if we learn how to do this the right way now, you can actually save yourself years of frustration. So let's do it right. Now, the first thing we wanna do is actually start with our speed. You wanna find a flat piece of ground. You wanna find just an easy, no challenging area and ride about this fast. Once you're riding this fast down the trail or down the field, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on your feet. And what we wanna do is we wanna spread our feet apart forward and back like this. It's called a pedal press. A pedal press is a technique used to actually build more balance. Now this is so important because I've seen many riders try to stay balanced with their feet level and just never feel like they can be comfortable on the bike. So right now I'm giving you a secret that a whole lot of intermediate and advanced riders have never done right. Now once you've got your feet in this position and you feel like you can press them away from each other, check in. A progression check in number one is going to be we want to have very, very relaxed and bent arms and bent and relaxed knees. When you do this, you should be able to have a tall spine and if you can feel your weight on your feet and not in your hands, you're doing well. You wanna have baby chick hands. Baby chick hands means you're squeezing tight enough to hold onto a baby bird, but not so tight that you hurt the little thing. So do the exact same thing on the bars. If you feel like you can go, wow, I'm standing up, I'm riding forward, my spine is tall, arms and knees are bent, weight's in the feet, then you can do this. Now again, the secret is in the pedal press. If you can't get it right the first time, go again and again and again by shifting your weight forward and backward and using that pedal press to create a platform to stand on that you can balance on top of. I want you to hit that subscribe button because we're on a mission to help 10,000 riders shred with confidence. Mountain biking is a whole lot harder than we are good at it. And right now there's 40 million mountain bikers in the United States alone. Subscribe to the channel. The standing spring is skill number two. The standing spring is really important. And what a standing spring is, it's really simple. We stand tall and we compress our shocks using our leg muscles, okay? So we compress the shocks using the leg muscles. If you're on a hardtail, you're only gonna be compressing the front shock, so it's a little bit of a muted move for you, but it's the same concept. Now, why this is so, so, so important and why I wanna share this with you today is because everyone talks to you about moving your body position forward and back and left and right and up and down, and it's actually not the most efficient way to ride your bike. The most efficient and the most fun way to ride your bike is by initiating wheelies, manuals, front wheel lifts, rear wheel lifts, and even cornering and drops using a standing spring. A standing spring is kind of one of those moves that unlocks everything later, so let's work on it right now. Now, how do we do a standing spring? A standing spring is really simple. You wanna ride along just like you were in the last video, standing tall. And then what we wanna do is you wanna ever so slightly drop the torso down while having your arms and legs just absorb that movement. And then all of a sudden, you want to violently, very purposefully and intentionally press through the feet. So you're going to use that downward momentum of your torso to suddenly just smash those pedals into the ground. I call this a standing spring because we're standing tall. Now the wrong way to do this is to get really, really, really low and push through the hands. And the reason why is because it creates a lot more work. Work takes energy, energy not as fun. Riding effortlessly comes from not having to try too hard. So I'm trying to teach you guys the right way the first time, pay attention. Now, once you've gotten your standing spring down, how you know that you've done this right 
is that you very quickly move the bike down and you're able to feel it pushing back up against you. Okay. Once you've gotten this down, you may be able to lift the front wheel a little bit, or you may be able to lift both wheels off the ground ever so slightly just by kind of standing there. That's how you know that you've gotten this right. Now, again, if you're finding yourself putting a lot of weight into your hands, stop moving your torso so much and focus on it like jumping on a trampoline. Remember when you were a kid and you hopped on a trampoline and you wanted to do a little bounce? It's the exact same movement as hopping on a trampoline and doing a bounce on a trampoline. Like, it's literally no different. So go get a trampoline, hop on it two or three times, then go get on the bike and try it that. Now that you got the standing spring completed and you can actually get that rebound going in your shocks or if you're riding a hardtail, feel that front popping up on you, then let's move on to number three, which is pedaling progressions. So what is a pedaling progression? I always say to my students in mountain bike breakthrough, Momentum before mountains, okay? So momentum before mountains means that it's a whole lot easier to pedal when you're down here versus when you're on the middle of the hill and you've lost all of your speed. And where this is most important is usually right before an uphill. Now the best advice I can give you for why this is important is it allows you to spin the pedals at a good amount before you go up a hill. The first pedaling progression we're going to go through is you wanna start on some flat ground and you wanna pick a very easy gear and we wanna to go too fast, okay? So what this does is it shows you, okay, now my cadence is faster than my mountain bike. This is where you wanna choose a harder gear. Now, in order to shift, what you don't wanna do is just click, click, click while you're applying pressure to the pedals. So you wanna to continue to move the pedals, but slow down how fast the pedals move while you're shifting, and then once you're done shifting, pick up that speed again and start pushing into the pedals to gain that momentum. Now let's do it in reverse. So what I want you to do is start with a very hard gear to pedal in, start pedaling, and then go out and find out, oh my gosh, it's too difficult. So when you wanna shift, stop pedaling so hard, click, 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 shift a few gears down, then start pedaling again. So what I want you to do is pay attention to how the bike behaves and how fast you need to go for the situation. And then when you're out on the trail, it's really, really easy to apply this. Just look at what's ahead of you. And if you know you need an easier gear, make sure you're not applying pressure while you're pedaling. Then make sure you're pedaling a whole lot before you go up a hill. That way you don't run out of momentum and get stopped. Let's move on to standing pedaling. So standing pedaling, what we wanna do is we want to lean the bike while we're pedaling to generate extra power. This helps us power up climbs instead of just spinning up climbs. So if you're a road rider or a cross country rider who doesn't really stand up when you're climbing, this is what you wanna do to get more power on the uphills. And how we're gonna do it is very simple. You're going to go and stand in that tall position like we did in step number one. And what we're gonna do is lean the bike to the right while we pedal down with the left foot. And we're going to lean the bike to the left when we pedal down with the right foot. This doubles your power, it creates more leverage, and it helps you shoot up any kind of obstacle that's in front of you, and it helps you have better control on the trail. Skill number four is using both brakes correctly. Now, why this is important is because when you use your brakes correctly, it gives you control and control is fun. And when we have the right speed for every situation, you can just have even more fun. So it's like logarithmically exponentially more fun. Great, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is some basic braking and here's how we wanna get really good, really fast with braking is you wanna find a downhill hill with some loose gravel or some consistent dirt, but you don't want something that's very grippy like asphalt or anything like that. You want something that you could skid on just a little bit, but not a lot. Once you've gotten your hill, then what we wanna do is go to the same spot at the top of the hill every time for every one of these drills. And then at the bottom of the hill, go ahead and set up a target. If you don't have a cone like this, use a stick or something. And what we wanna do is start at the top of the hill and the first drill we wanna do is we wanna use just the back brake. And when you're going down the hill, you wanna keep your weight centered, okay? And you might notice that you need to shift your weight back ever so slightly. But what we wanna do this time is not shift your weight a ton and just use the back brake and keep squeezing it a little harder until your back tire skids. Once you skid, I want you to notice that, okay? This is called brake modulation. Now, 
How you're gonna know that you're really doing well on this is you find those points where the tires let go and start skidding, and then you let go of the brake to continue rolling, okay? If you can do this, you're going to be better at braking than probably 70% of riders out there who just grab brakes when they wanna slow down, and skid, and don't really have control. Now, what we wanna do is repeat this drill for the front brake, and what we wanna do is slow down completely to a stop using just the front brake. Now, you're gonna notice that it's probably not going to skid on you as easily, but you wanna get close, okay? Now that you've gotten some experience playing around with braking with the rear and seeing how it skids and braking with the front, now I want you to combine the brakes and see if you can wait a little longer before you get to that marker, okay? Do this five or 10 times and you're going to start feeling comfortable already. Now, let's talk about supercharging your braking skill. And what we don't wanna do is go 60 front, 40 rear, and all this complex stuff. Nice. You were doing too much there. <laughs> so ridiculous. Just use the feel of what you just practiced to slow down as much as you can, as fast as you can. And this time we're gonna combine it with a little bit of body movement. So what we have to do to slow down faster is we have to add pressure straight down through the pedals. And how do we do that? Well, since we're moving forward, we don't wanna go straight up and down. We wanna actually pretend that we're pushing the pedals forward just a little bit. So an easy way to think about this is to kind of drop your heels and to sit behind the bike ever so slightly, but make sure that your arms are able to continue to move so that if you need to balance, you can kind of move the bike side to side to balance. So while you're adding weight to the bike, you can actually brake harder and slow down faster. Is this helpful so far? I hope it is because it's pretty fun to practice these braking drills, isn't it? Good job so far. Now you've got a little bit of brake control. Let's take it on to skill number five. Skill number five is slow speed track stands and turns. So what we're going to do here is different from cornering. Notice that a slow speed turn, what we're doing is we're actually turning the front wheel and we're going slow. And a track stand is something we can do to balance if we stop in the middle of a slow speed turn. So first we're gonna talk about slow speed turns, then we're gonna talk about how to do a track stand. So first, slow speed turns. The number one key is we want to be able to move off of the saddle if we need to and have a little bit of weight on your hands, okay? So that means you may want to lean forward or shift your weight forward. What you wanna do is get, a, get an object like these cones or a tree or something and ride around them and go as slow as you can. Try to see if you can look around the turn with your head and your eyes, enough to where you can even see your bike behind you. Now again, another key or little, little tip or secret here is in order to balance, because we're going slow, you're gonna to need to wiggle the bike side to side. So if you feel like you're falling a little bit left, just wiggle the bike left. If you feel like oh, maybe you need to wiggle the bike right, try it out. And just wiggle the bike side to side under you to help you balance, really easy. Try this both directions. Now here's the secret. What you wanna do to maintain kind of a control of the bike here is you wanna use speeding up with pedaling or ratcheting, that's where you do little pedals, or you wanna slow down using just the back brake, okay? If you use the front brake, it'll abruptly stop you you're gonna have a bad time. So don't use just the front brake, use just the back brake and just kind of feather it or cover it and try going around an object two or three times left and right and use different amounts of braking and pedaling to help you balance along with the bike lean. So how you know that you've achieved this skill specifically is that you can choose the speed you want to go and you're able to control the bike relative to the speed. In other words, you must master the balance, the braking, and also the pedaling in order to create enough speed to get you around, but not so much speed that you're off balance. Now what you might find is that if you go around something really sharp, you might go, oh my gosh, I'm going too fast to make the turn. And so what you can do is you can actually slowly slow down and hold that back brake until you stop and do what's called a track stand. Now track stand is a little bit different from a low speed turn, but they're really, really closely related. So a track stand's really simple and you can either fall to the left or to the right. And so what you wanna do is counteract the falling motion by pedaling forward or by braking backward, all right? So if the bike, is falling to the left and the wheel is turning to the left, then what you wanna do is you wanna pedal a little bit. Now, if the bike is falling to the right 
and we're turning left, then you want to use the brake. Same thing for pointed to the right. If the bike is falling to the right and we're pointed to the right, then you want to pedal. If the bike is falling to the left and we're pointed to the right, we want to use that back brake. Another thing you can do as well is wiggle the arms just a little bit so it can help to stand up tall and just move the arms ever so slightly to help you keep balance in a track stand. Now a good challenge for the track stand is to be able to hold a track stand for 10 to 30 seconds and be able to balance left and right a few times either way. Now why this is so important again is that if you need to slow down so much on the trail that you have to stop, a track stand allows you to not have to put a foot down. This is really important if you're going uphill on a corner. All right, so slow cornering is a little bit different because what we're going to do is instead of picking an object to turn around, we need to actually take this to the trail. And I'm gonna consider this a separate skill because this one has to do with line choice, okay? So when we're going into a slow turn on the trail, what we wanna do is we wanna slow down first. So slow down early using braking from the last exercise. And then what we want to do is we want to pick our path, okay? So picking our path just means you're going to look for the traction. I like to call it targeting the traction. So just look for the part of the trail that's going to give you lots of grip. And then what you're going to do is use the slow speed turning and the track stand concept to point your tires through the, the trail that you picked while looking ahead. Okay. Now a final little bonus point is that once you've navigated a slow turn, you want to be thinking, okay, how do I pedal out of this? Now, if it's an uphill turn, you may want to be in a low gear, a very easy gear to pedal in. If it's a downhill turn, then what we want to do is be ready to let off the brakes and roll through and have a lot of fun. So be, be sure to look where you want to go and be in a good gear for the situation. And that's slow cornering for you. Congratulations. Skill number seven is bike lean the right way. This is the one that I see people teach well, but leave out the most important thing, which is being able to put your body in an anatomically strong position. This is what it looks like to lean the bike or tilt the bike in an anatomically strong position. Notice that the core is supporting the torso. Notice that the body is not moving very much. And notice how the body and the head just look very still and supported and calm, okay? So the wrong way to do this is to reach around like this where your elbows are going all over the place and your knees are pumping up and down. You wanna be very still, okay? So how to do this is very, very important. You wanna drop your dropper post if you have a dropper. You wanna get in a lower position where your seat of your pants is almost touching the saddle. And then what we wanna do is we wanna ride forward at a decent speed and then just get in that low, low, low position and rock the bike side to side. The key here is you wanna be able to do this while riding in a straight line. So pick a line on the ground, go draw one in with a stick, and ultimately what you wanna do is be able to lean the bike side to side without moving the torso hardly at all. And if you can do this, this is the precursor to amazing cornering, it's the precursor to amazing skills, so get out there and work on it. Now I gotta be honest, I've seen people struggle with this for weeks and weeks and years and years, and the reason why is because a lot of times if you sit at a desk or you've had any injuries or anything that kind of prohibits your, your deep core from working properly, then it's, it's just impossible for you to do this, frankly. And so what you need to do is you need to join our membership because this is something we actively fix over time. And to be honest, if that's the root issue, if your core is not able to support your torso, you need to get in our program right now because this is going to wreck you for years and years to come if you don't fix it now. So go ahead and join the membership. We'll help you out. We'll give you personalized workouts that'll help with this and it'll translate into being able to move your torso properly by supporting with the core. Now moving on to number eight, which is the flawless wheel lift. The flawless wheel lift can be a lot of fun and it'll help you free ride like, frankly, you've never felt before and I feel great sharing this with you and I can't find any other words that start with an F, but let's go anyways. Here's why this is so important. Flawless front wheel lift, this is how you get over everything on a trail. This is how you do bunny hops and manuals. This is how you do wheelies. This is how you do like everything. And so this is a really important skill and how you do a front wheel lift. I actually did a full breakdown on this with a how to manual video, you can check it out there. Uh, but let's just start with a standing spring. So you've gotta get your standing spring down. So standing spring, and it has to be done through the legs, not the upper body. If Again, if you're leaning down and pressing your torso and doing a push up on the bars and pulling back, you can do this, however, it'll be a lot of extra work. And so the way we wanna do it instead is just slam straight down with the body, 
really push on that suspension. And then what we wanna do is we wanna stand straight up and drift the torso upward and get out of the way and let the front of the bike spring up to us. Now the first part of the spring up will be pretty easy and you'll get it to come up a foot or two, but what'll happen is you're gonna start feeling weight in the feet or resistance as the bike gets up to about here. Then what you wanna do is you want to actually bend the knees ever so slightly and then row the hands up to the hips. So bend the knees ever so slightly and row the hands up to the hips. What this will allow you to do as a rider is actually let the front wheel come up and let the physics of the bike do the work for you rather than force it and pull. So how you know you've, you've really done this is it, it literally feels like the bike springs up to you like a, like a puppy on New Year's Day. You just got a new puppy and the puppy's like, Dad, thanks. <laughs> you know, like... That's what it feels like. The, it, the bike just comes up to you. Now I gotta admit, this one's pretty hard. So if you can't get it on the first try, it's totally fine. But everything depends on initiating this and then getting out of the way by moving the torso up and then bending the knees out of the way and just gently pulling the hands up to us. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Let's move on to number nine. Number nine is the radical rear wheel lift and rad riders are really, really radically I don't, I don't know. Let's just, let's just go with it. So here we go. Why this is important is it it's actually really helpful in cornering, jumps, and also just regular trail riding. This just allows you to have control over the rear of your bike. What's cool about the rear wheel lift is that it's, it's like kind of the same as the front wheel lift. We need to do the standing spring, but this time, instead of springing the front up out of the way, we want to kind of move our weight ever so slightly onto the bars and then pull the bike up to us, okay? So what we don't wanna do, a lot, of, a lot of instruction says you wanna brace on the bars and lean forward. That's actually a pretty chaotic way to do it. It's not wrong. It's just that it, it's like you're leaning forward. That's not a wheel lift, that's a forward lean. So what we wanna do instead is we want to actually slam that standing spring down super hard and then let the body come up ever so slightly. And while we do, just scoop the feet up behind you. It's, it's, that's it. Just scoop the feet behind you. If you point your toes down, whether you're wearing clips or you're wearing flats, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be able to do this. You got this. I believe in you. So the goal for this one is that you, you really feel like your torso kind of just moves up and down and you want to keep your eyes looking almost straight ahead in many cases, because if you look down at your front wheel, it can actually get you to lean forward when really what we want to do is we want to bounce up and then let the bike bounce up under us and scoop those feet, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, critical skill number 10. Critical skill number 10 is how to dismount without crashing. We all love falling off of the bike, right? Like it's funny when other people have it happen to them, but not to me, right? So how do you, when you're going uphill and you lose momentum, how do you get off of your bike? Well, the first thing you do is you spot your landing. So you're going to spot your landing and look where you want to basically put a foot down. And the second thing you want to do is stick out a leg. So it's two S's. Spot your landing and stick out your leg. Now, when you do that, you also want to squeeze the brakes. Squeeze both of the brakes and that way your bike doesn't go anywhere while you've got your foot down. So again, spot your landing, stick out a foot, squeeze the brakes. Now once you're stopped, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in like an easy enough gear to pedal out again. And then what you wanna do is remount the bike and pedal off all in one motion. You can practice this on flat ground. It's really not hard at all on flat ground. And if you can do it on flat ground, you can actually do it over something like a rock or a root that you're stuck on. So get out there, give it a try. Don't get stuck and, and look like a fool. Do this instead. Moving on to number 11. You need to know how to do this if you're gonna have any fun on the bike. The low position gives us stability. It's awesome because what this move allows us to do is to do all the cool stuff that you see on a bike. It allows us to ride over gnarly terrain. It allows us to absorb impacts. And it's really cool because it also allows us to get low and get ready for cornering. And when we're getting low for cornering, Man, you can have a lot more fun. Now here's how to get in the low position or the attack position on a mountain bike. Number one, you wanna drop your dropper post. Number two, you want to ride at a medium speed just to get used to this on some flat ground. Now remember when you were riding standing tall how we did a pedal press to push the feet away from each other? We also wanna do that here. So while you're pressing your pedals away from each other and doing the pedal press, you wanna sink everything down without changing the angle of your torso. So it's kind of like doing a squat 
which again, here's how I would do it. I would hop off the bike and I would do this move in a riding position, one foot in front of the other, squat down, see how it feels off the bike with a nice long extended torso, squat down and stand back up. Now, hop back on the bike, see if you can do this. Now your goal to do a low position is we wanna have bent arms, bent knees, bent hips, bent ankles, and you don't have to bend your toes. So here's the thing, what this will do is it'll give you an amazing amount of stability and this crazy range of motion that you can branch off from. So it's very important you actually, I really mean it, I'm, I'm smashing my tungsten ring on the table. So it's really important that you practice this because if you can do this move, I swear to you, you're gonna be able to do some awesome stuff on the bike. Now, the goal is to go super low. And what you're going to find is that it's easier to keep your knees next to each other and form a triangle like this. That way, you can preserve that pedal press. And if you stagger your knees one in front of the other, then it actually puts a lot of pressure on your forward foot and it's just kind of hard to balance. So that's kind of the key there. Now, here's the important part. I mean, this is going to be pretty easy for some of you because you're going to be able to just get low on the bike. I'm going to talk to a couple different groups specifically and really dial this in. If you're a roadie or XC rider or someone who used to do a lot of that kind of riding, then you're going to probably not be able to do this. You're just going to hinge over at the hips and you're only gonna get like a third of this move out of it. You need to, to drop your saddle and you need to get so low that your butt touches the seat, okay? Don't stop until your butt touches the seat. If you can't do that, then you're not milking this move for what it's worth and you're not gonna be able to really move as well out on the trail. So I really encourage you practice this in a safe area and get used to that full entire range of motion so that when you take it out of the trail, you're gonna be better. I also wanna to speak to people that maybe work at a desk a lot or you're in your 40s and 50s. Fact of the matter is that you aren't moving as low as you think you are. And because you're not moving as low as you think you are, you're just not going to be able to express as much of the movement that you need to shred with confidence and do it like this. So if you wanna do it like this, then the real thing you gotta do is be able to get super low. So again, you two go out there and touch that seat to the saddle. Do it, just, just do it. Trust me, it'll help you. So the really important thing here is to actually not just practice this in an empty field, but to take it to the trail. Here's an example of me modulating my body from a tall riding position to an attack position and really feeling the range of motion all the way through. Notice when I'm tall, I'm, I'm really like preserving energy and notice when I'm low, what's happening is that I'm able to get a lot of stability and notice how low I get here, it's pretty cool. So take it out the trail, have some fun with that one and impress your riding friends, yay. All right, now here it is. This is the holy grail of awesome for a beginner mountain biker. And frankly, this is something that I did a full entire breakdown. I got a ton of views. I think I got like 40,000 views on this video. If you wanna watch the entire breakdown, click here. But in the simple version for the beginners, what I wanna show you is a three-step system for cornering. So the critical skill number 12, cornering, how we're gonna do this is different from turning the bars. We're actually going to carve a turn like a skier. And there's three parts to cornering. There's torso, there's tilt, and there's turn. Okay, so torso, tilt, and turn. How we're gonna do this is we're going to use the low position we just talked about in number 11. We're gonna get low on that bike and we're going to get that torso nice and low. Now for some of you, you may hinge over at the hips a little bit more. For some of you, you may be able to drop your hips down a little bit more and hold up tall like this. Either way, it's fine. We just need to get low where you've got a lot of room to move the arms and legs. Second, we gotta tilt that bike. Now here's the key, when you tilt the bike, you gotta go back to skill number seven, leaning the bike the right way, because if you're moving all like this and, and pumping your arms and legs everywhere, then you're going to be off balance and it's going to automatically feel weird and you don't wanna feel weird, you wanna be cool out there on the trail. So how you're cool is that nice stable side to side tilt and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So combining the attack position with the tilt, gives us the chance now to turn. Now here's where it gets a little different. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna practice this off the bike. And now what I want you to do is I want you to go and stand on flat ground in a riding position, pretend you're on the handlebars, and I want you to turn, okay? So turning, what you're gonna notice is your eyes can go really far, your head almost goes as far as your eyes, your shoulders are gonna turn next. Then you're, you're gonna be able to turn your torso, 
and your hips and your knees, and you're gonna feel like your entire body is twisted like this. What you wanna do is be in a bent over position like this one, and it's just going to feel like your whole body is like wound up. Now, that's exactly what you're gonna do on the bike now that you've done the torso drop and the tilt of the bike. Just, it's as simple as looking. So you're just going to like turn. That's it, don't overcomplicate it. If you can get the first two moves right and get comfortable with turning, I'm not even exaggerating, you're going to be years ahead of people who have been trying to corner for 10, 20 years and you're gonna be able to get it and they're gonna be like, how'd you get so good so fast? You can be like, well, because, because David, was really, I mean, he shared me this video and like I learned it from a video. You can share the video. All seriousness though, um, you, you can do this if you just get these skills right. So practice torso, tilt, and turn on some flat ground and then take it out of the trail. Have some fun with these. Listen, we're on a mission to help 10,000 riders shred with confidence. If you wanna help us out, subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, blow this one up. We want it to be really, really good. Now, if you want further help, join our community. There's a link below, and I'll actually personally help you. Me and my team will help you shred with confidence. We're gonna give you community, we're gonna give you lessons, we're gonna give you the progressions, and we're actually gonna give you feedback on what I talked about today. Now, if you get this and you're a beginner rider, we'll help you get through the intermediate plateau as fast as possible, and I'll see you on the next video. So if that sounds interesting to you, join us. We'll see you there. Peace.